You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. with the sports coma with the Q and the guys. And we have intense, entertaining, educating, and enlightening sport talk from your favorite sports family. I'm Big Q, and i like to welcome y'all to Podcast 199. That's right, the big 199. we in the building with this special sports coma edition. I guess you could say we're uh, covering the OTAs. And uh, joining me on the podcast is, is my partner in crime, DC. How you doing tonight, man? Well, pretty good, man. It's uh, pretty fitting to be show 199. As hot as it was, it felt like 199 <laughs> degrees. So you're right on point. 199. 199 on the sports cast. That's right. Uh, and uh, tonight on the sports coma with Big Q and the guys, first of all, we'd like to thank you guys for joining us and all the support that we're getting on um a lot of the material that's out there, we appreciate the support from PR with the PRO Media Network and what you guys are doing with the sharing of the shows and everything like that. Thank you guys. Thanks for joining the social media uh, webs, uh, the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all those in the description box. Join them, join up for updates and more information about your saints, about everything else. Uh, join those Facebook pages. Also, donate to the show uh, via patreon.com. Uh, slash the PRO Media Network and support the sponsor of the show, www.theposhlifestyle, life spell with a Y L Y F E style.com for all your latest and organic supplements to help you out. Also, water filters, clothes, all that kind of wonderful stuff at theposhlifestyle.com, not just the website, but a lifestyle. And of course, when you put the sports comb in at the coupon section, you get 10% off on your final purchase. All that is our gift to you for being the wonderful people that you are and the supporters. So thank you once again for joining us on podcast 199 and today's show on the rundown. We'll be breaking down. We'll talk uh, about the OTAs. That's pretty much the main topic. DC will give us his breakdown on the OTAs, uh, what's happening with the OTAs and we have stuff about the Saints secondary, Traven Durrell and the likes. We'll jump off into that in the show. Also we'll cover uh, some other interesting news that a lot of people are having out there in the <laughs> in NFL circles, DC. Yeah, what would that be? Uh, AJ Klein. We have been talks and rumors about AJ Klein and a potential trade. See, uh, it ain't so. We're going to cover that as well. We're going to talk about that foolishness as well on the show. Uh, also, other news is Haloi Kakai, one of our favorite. Uh, guys on the sports coma. I can't tell how you said he was going to get cut. Anyway, we like to talk about Kakai. <laughs> and, it, you know, hey, I want I can tell you, man, is that when they start trying to play you at other positions than what you're naturally supposed to do. And trying to play that man that linebacker since he was And working. it ain't worked then. What make you think it's going to work now? now? I've always been from the mindset is that, remember when they drafted him, he was drafted by, for another defensive well, we coordinator. We do have an a, a offensive tackle that used to play DN. In uh, Leonard. Yeah, but you ain't make him change. He changed in college. The Saints are all about uh, versatility. I hear you, brother. <laughs> but we're going to talk about Haloi Kakaha and his uh, potential switch to linebacker. What does that mean? And could he actually pull that off, even though we noticed we watched Kakaha, noticed that he's not very good in coverage? So, you know, just using him as a Russian yeah. linebacker, perhaps. We'll talk about that, break that down, and see where the hell they're trying to go with that thing. And also, we'll talk about the NFL's new rule about the hitting with the crown of the helmet. Uh, now it's potentially, if you can hit somebody with the crown of the helmet, it could lead to an ejection in the game. We'll talk about, is that cream in the game? I mean, is it softening the game? Are we becoming a pansy league? Are we becoming a soft league? I think, I think this is a little crazy. You know, so... I mean, the helmet is like 10 pounds... It, it takes up probably about 20% of the whole uniform. 
like how they're not gonna make contact with the helmet at all. Like it's almost impossible to not do that. Like I don't I understand how um you're gonna not do that. And then the plays I saw as examples of, you know, plays where they would get flagged were like jaw dropping to me. You know, like they gave these three example plays and it's 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 really mind boggling. It's, it's 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 a lot of gray area in that. But uh, that's how the NFL like it. They like it. Uh, they like it with a lot of grin. They gave us the catch rule back, so I guess they got to have another way where they yeah, can control some the kind game. of way to kind of whip the game. But yeah. we'll get more into that. And also, our final uh, topic will be what we call look the lookout segment. The lookout segment. That's right. Look the lookout segment. Well, now what that is is we're gonna give you one player. DC might give you two, but I'm gonna give you one player that I think that is an underrate that's an under the radar player that you need to watch out and is a serious contender to make this 53-man roster when it comes down to it. I will give you my player. DC will give you his player as well, and we're going to keep it moving like that. Now, uh, that's the rundown brought to you by the pot, the good folks at theposhlifestyle.com. DC, let's move right on into it. Now, uh, we're talking about the OTAs, DC. Week number three, um, breakdown. We made some rumors about Trayvon Durrell. Of course, Trayvon Durrell is playing with the first team yeah. with Drew Brees, and he's kind of cutting up out there. He's showing what he could do as a top receiver, uh, making great plays and catches as well, playing well. Of course, he had a few mistakes, but overall, he's been really impressing a lot of the Saints coaches out there. What, what, what's your information you have on uh, the OTAs week three? Um, there's a lot of information on the OTAs um, from week three. You had uh, Traven Durrell, who's been out there with the first team, um, and he's been doing good, man. He hasn't been dropping any balls. Um, a lot of his speed seems to be back from his LSU days. Uh, the hamstring been holding up. Yep. Um, he's been looking real impressive, so I'm, I'm shedding some tears for my boy Tommy Lee. <laughs> Tommy Lee, Jerry Tom, Lewis. Tommy Lee been looking good, too, and he's definitely putting up a good fight. That's another, uh, I guess, Thing that's been going on, so Love haven't heard much see. about Brandon Coleman. So I'm trying to figure out how all that's going to work out. You got Traven Durrell, um, Tommy Lee, Brandon Coleman. It, it's almost like they're all fighting for this one spot because we got four receivers that are a lot. You're going to give the the, the rookie uh, Smith, who actually has been looking very good too. It's been a lot of talk about him. Um, he's not dropping a lot of balls. He's making contested catches. Meredith is looking good. Michael Thomas is going out there dominating every day. Um, these are the type of uh, conversations. Then you got an undrafted free agent receiver and Eldrin uh, Massington. He he's also Massington, making yeah. some plays and he's and showing like- some he's showing some flash. But uh, he, he ran uh, he ran a few of his routes against Devontae Harris. <laughs> uh, well, we got to take that with a grain of salt. Though. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't think that's gonna get him to make the team. Um, Anzalone. Is doing a lot, man. Um, he's really, you know, stepping up. And I mean, he's he did it last year, so that's not a surprise. We're not really concerned about what he's doing at OTAs because you know what you're gonna get with him. But it's uh, when the pads go on, we need to see if he can hit with that shoulder. You know, you can't dip the crown of the helmet now, so you gotta make sure you're gonna have to hit with that shoulder all the time. Right. And um, make sure he stays healthy. So you got Davenport who's doing this thing. He's still coming along. Uh, he, he's beaten Michael Ola. I don't know what that's worth, but he's gotten Not some much. sex <laughs> on him. Ola. And also J. Ron uh, Elliott, I think he's got some work in against him. So um, he made a play on Alvin Kamari where he would attack with him. So he, he's doing a lot of good stuff. So um, pretty much i say OTAs was going the way you would like. The players that you would expect to look good are um, Marshawn Lattimore got an interception. Um, they had a couple of interceptions in the true uh, two minute drill. It was kind of pissed Drew Brees off. Um, you had Lattimore and, and Chris Banjo. So the defense out is out there making plays as well as the offense. Um, so it's 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 pretty exciting, man. Boston, there's Boston Scott, uh, Scott sightings every once in a while. Um, you you got a lot going on, but. You had uh, Rick Leonard and Jared Griffin. Um, they've missed some time. Um, and then you had other guys like Cam Jordan, uh, Trey Hendrickson, Alex Okafor, Brandon Coleman, 
Deion Yelder, Andres Pete, and Karen Meredith, who haven't really contributed that much this week. But uh, last week you heard some things from some of these players. So OTAs are panning out pretty nicely. And, I mean, it's OTAs, man. It's non-contact. I know we're all hungry for some football news. We want to know what's going on. But we're not really going to get the the meat and potatoes like you uh, like to say. (laughs) And I'm more of a uh, salad and fruit type of guy. But (laughs) we ain't going to try that. You don't get the salad and fruit. It don't, it don't match. No. See? All right. But um, we ain't going to really get the, the real thickness of it until we get into this mini camp, which is coming up. Hey, I'll tell you what, man. Um, appreciate the breakdown. We spoke about, like you were talking about, Marshawn Lattimore's production uh, in the OTAs and how he's looked I'm pretty I'm training forward. camp, not mini camp. Okay. Right, I get you. Yeah. Right. But uh, you, you take a look at uh, a lot of the talk is then you mentioned Ken Crawley. Um, we know I, we, didn't, I actually didn't mention Kid Crowley. Well, before, let me mention. But you, you, you died here on the tip of let your me, tongue. Let me talk to Kid, talk about King Crawley. And it's also that, didn't he? Didn't Kid Crawley make a play out the other day? <laughs> Kid, 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 nah, Kid Crawley didn't make no plays today. I thought Kid Crawley had some plays he made out there today, did he? Nah. Okay, it seems because I'm saying that we talk about Chris Ken Banjo Crawley. and. and uh, Marshawn Lattimore. Okay, Marshawn Lattimore. Okay, good. No, no, and uh, Marcus Williams. You know, he, right. he made uh, some plays. Uh, yeah. But all that I'm saying about <laughs> when we get down to meat and potatoes and we talk about the Saints secondary, we got to talk about Ken Crawley. It seems to be the buzzword, the buzz topic uh, that a lot of uh, listeners and commenters seem to talk about with Ken Crawley. Now, of course, we, we talked about him in the prior show. Uh, I made mention of the fact that I think that Patrick Robinson will Patrick ultimately. Patrick Robinson made some plays. I, well, Patrick Robinson's going to make plays but all you, But all you, you want pre- Patrick Robinson all, in all the season slot, long. You want him in the slot, Big Q. That's my only problem with the King Crawley thing. I, you know what? I'm Patrick saying, Robinson is one of the best slot cornerbacks in the league. Not saying he can't play outside, but you want him in the slot. So who's going to play outside when he in we, the slot? Oh, this might come as a shock to you, DC, but we have other cornerbacks on the <gasps> team. See, it ain't so. Oh, yeah, we got plenty of So, Ken we Crawley goes guys. from being number two all the way to the fifth guy? No, I didn't say that. In your projection? No, I didn't say he becomes <laughs> P.J. Williams. Okay. All I'm saying at the end of the day is that you have other cornerbacks that have to, you know, show that way here. You know, so you're going to have a lot of cornerbacks that, gonna, that you're going to see a lot from. Some of these guys are going to actually surprise you. Well, I, I, I know you're hitting at uh, McCrow Jones, and I think he's going to be a hell of a cornerback, maybe even safety. Um, they're saying he's undersized. He's, he's like six foot. I don't know why he can't be. Six I don't know. Somebody told but, me he was five foot ten. I wonder who that was. I don't but, know. But uh, anyway, moving on. <laughs> I, I ain't know he got measured with shoes on, y'all. But <laughs> no, they, 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 they play on barefoot them out there. They, they play barefoot it every Sunday. Do you see your head? You five ten at the combine. <laughs> he grew two inches in OTAs. Whatever. Sure he did. So. You know we gotta go pay some bills. You know what we gotta do. So, so it's DC with Big Q from Sportscom, and we'll see y'all on the other side of the break. Uh, uh, What's uh, up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. I'm talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes so what are you waiting for head on over to the posh lifestyle.com that's the posh lifestyle life spell with a y l y f e style.com put in the sports coma for the 10 percent discount on your purchase it's a win-win so get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans Eye View. 
Wow, what a huge honor it is to be named NBA 2K18 Legend Edition Cover Athlete. I really wouldn't be here without the guidance, love, and support of my mom and dad. Also, I'd like to thank my coaches, both college and professional. But most of all, I'd like to thank Kobe Bryant. He was an NBA 2K Legend Cover Athlete first. He's so awesome and handsome and has really nice natural teeth. Wait, what? I'll be looking at his teeth. This ain't over, Kobe. Payback's gonna be fun. NBA fans, NBA League Pass is your ticket to all of this season's action. Every exciting matchup. Every incredible shot. Every big moment, every game live and on demand in HD quality on every type of device, wherever you are, whenever you want. NBA League Pass has you covered. Sign up today. Follow the Sports Hub on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. get to this entertaining, interesting, mind-boggling, frustrating, exciting sports talk. Can I do that? Because I know you don't say none of that. None of that. <laughs> but it's interesting to hear it, though. <laughs> but anyway, like I was saying before uh, before I left, before break, the trial Jamison, I guess that's the guy you're hinting at on. Um, I'm not sure oh, if he's... Actually, a few guys, man. Well, you got Moore, too, and who else you after got, that? Well, you got Kareem, Kareem, uh, Kareem Moore. Uh, there's Lyndon Stevens. That's a possibility. And I like him. And then, of course, a lot of people sent, told me in the comments section, and, hey, guys, I'm listening to y'all, not to sleep on P.J. Williams. You know, I, so... I've been telling you that. They've been listening to me. Well, you know, I have to listen to them, bro. Every okay, now and yeah. then, you know. We and do have some. Well. We got some and small. We got, got some, some small real small man. Saints fans out there, yeah, man. We do real good ones, bro. But what you was finish your commentary on that? Well, my, my my thing, <laughs> I didn't even touch him yet. But my thing is, um, the Saints. We look at cornerback. I don't think we like to necessarily play a lot of rookies. Like I know that don't make sense because of what happened last year, but we had some very rare rookies. But we usually like to have people out there with experience, and a lot of times, if they have some time where we can sit them and and kind of work them in, we do. And cornerback, outside of quarterback, is the hardest position to learn. I mean, Michelle Lattimore made that look like uh, that's a lie, but <laughs> that ain't gonna work for yeah, everybody, he's a natural, you know? Yeah. yeah so, uh, Natrell Jamison, uh, Lyndon Stevens, um, I, Moore. I don't remember his first Kareem name. Moore. Kareem Moore. Um, these guys, I mean, we you can't expect them to come in and just take the mantle away from Ken Crawley. He made mistakes, uh, probably one of the most penalized cornerbacks last year, but he didn't give up a lot of big plays. He was actually the number one cornerback inside the 20 yard line in the red zone last year. Nobody don't know that, you know, so he, he's a pretty good cornerback. I wouldn't say he's great. Um, obviously, you're going to always look to improve when you got a guy like Michonne Lattimore. But um, Ken Crawley is a pretty good stopgap, I think, now. And he also can improve. I mean, he's only this is only his third year. It's a lot there, DC. It's a lot there from the OTAs, man. We appreciate you breaking down the OTAs like that, man. How, how you pimp me and uh, breaking down the OTAs and giving a whole Ken Crawley segment? Well, where Ken Crawley was in the OTAs. <laughs> he ain't said nothing about him in the OTAs. No, no news I read. Which uh, I guess if you're a cornerback, that might be a good thing. Right. You know he don't get interceptions. So. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's the news. I didn't the hear news. no forty yard bomb uh, going on him. Uh, probably, uh, I'm sure Michael Thomas probably got it for one. <laughs> right. But we'll give it some time. Maybe you know down the line you might actually see that. But you know, at the end of the day, you know we look at a lot of the stuff that's going on uh, with the Saints and OTAs, man, and a lot of good news coming out. But the number one good story of it of the day is the fact that nobody was injured during OTAs and that's the number one thing they because, not they ain't hit <clears> each other. Right. You know, anybody <laughs> didn't get hurt, they made it out clean. And if and you that's get hurt in the OTAs, it was already coming. 
<laughs> it's like two hand touch. So, but let's move on to our next topic. That DC appreciate you for delivering that OTAs. Let's get into the next topic, which is AJ Klein, a potential trade. Now, according to CBS Sports, it was a story that broke, and a lot of you Saints uh, uh, fans heard about this story that was done uh, by CBS, uh, which said that they listed him as a potential. AJ Klein, <clears throat> former Carolina Panther back is listed as a potential potential trade candidate uh for june 1st the june 1st trade candidates uh, you know about the june 1st cuts and all this kind of stuff now of course you know klein is in the top 10 of course with the salary uh uh with the saints and he makes a lot of money uh, for what the saints are paying him like we had this discussion last show when we talked about what p rob is making what uh, Coleman is making and relative what their roles are going to be. This is a one that I guess this is something similar to what this gentleman is trying to throw up here. We got to uh, get a name for Kurt, man, because every time you say Coleman, I think about Brandon. No, the, the, the Coleman that's actually going to count. <laughs> Brandon the real a, Coleman. Brandon had a lot of good blockers, blocks last year, man. They're going to start referring to Brandon Coleman as Gary Coleman because the real Coleman. Well, he's too the, tall to be Gary Coleman. Like I'm six, saying, six. It's for, so it's his role. His role is going to be as small as Gary. Anyway, I'm just a bad joke. But anyway, let's get into BC. some of this. Uh, this <laughs> article by uh, CBS Sports mentions the fact that they believe, they believe, and this is interesting. We're reporting it because, you know, I've, I've never considered A.J. Klein. I like A.J. Klein. I think he's a, he'll benefit this team. My my uh, partner in crime might differ in that opinion and shame <laughs> on him if he does. But the, <laughs> June 1st, the June 1st trade candidates is listed in his report. Uh, has they link AJ Klein uh, potentially with the Bills? Uh, you know, needing a, a, a linebacker, and they're saying, let's read some of this here. DC it says Saints have depth at depth at the position, and Klein's contract makes him an attractive trade target for a linebacker needed teams like say the Bills. The Saints have just uh, six point three million in cap for this year, which is ranked twenty seven. And Klein is entering the second year of a four year contract worth twenty four million dollars. That include a fourteen point a four point one million dollar base, and the post June first trade will leave one million in dead money this year, and add two million in twenty nineteen, as well as a four point two million uh, dollar cap savings. That's a big amount of money spread and uh, that the Saints will gain back instantaneously if they was to pull the move and they could spread out the rest of the money over the next two years. Interesting thought process, nonetheless. It also speculates that there's no guarantee the Saints will look to move Klein, which I'm in agreement with. That make no sense to do that. Uh, but New Orleans did sign Demario Davis, but Davis is already pitted as a middle linebacker. Uh, the, the, the word on the street is A.J. Klein is set to rock at the strong side and Anzalone at the weak side. So that's no secret there. But uh, outside of that, they said if Klein cannot win an outside linebacker job, and I don't see why he wouldn't, then they could look to move him and find a potential trade partner with Buffalo. Now, this is specifically a, uh, a uh, I guess it's one of these reports where they're just coming out the woodwork trying to drum up something. But to pick A.J. Klein of all people to throw in the trade rumors, that to me is really odd. You know, that's really strange. But what you take on, what you think about the story uh, with A.J. Uh, Klein and the, the potential trade with the Bills? I don't think nothing Obviously, I got to disagree with you. Um, I, I don't think it's particularly odd. I think it's a person having an open mind and actually looking at our roster. Um, we have like four middle linebackers, dude. AJ Klein is supposed to be a middle linebacker. I think that's what we mess up with him. Klein can play either position, though. Yeah, he can, but he's not really good at either position. Um, that's not true. Okay. Put the tape on. Klein is we very got, smart. We got AJ Klein here in the building, y'all. I'm not an AJ Klein hater. I'm gonna I'm stay the truth. I actually like AJ Klein. He's not I, good at either position. That what you just said? I don't. When I think of good, I put him as average. When I think of good, you that's that tier before great. So he no, he not. So that. AJ Klein is not good, but Ken Crawl is. Ken Crawl is a little bit above average. I, I, I said, is he good? He good. And AJ Klein is not good. Nope. <laughs> Did you hear that? Fan? Nope. You know, uh, uh, Saints okay. family. Let me I tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. That all the Klein lovers. Man, nobody ain't basing no turkey, man. What you talking about? Come but let me, sure let me, is. let me, let me explain. Um, AJ Klein is very good at getting 
getting in on plays, being around the ball. But when you're talking about covering running backs out of the backfield, which if you put him at an outside linebacker position, he has to do. I think he can be real good at uh, occasionally blitzing and doing things like that too. He's very good at uh, getting people lined up. He's an intelligent player. I would like him on my team. But for what are we giving him? We have a $17 million contract or was it $12 million? You got that, and then you got your starting linebacker uh, who's going to be Demario Davis. There's no competition. He's going to win that out making a $24 million contract. And then you got, in my opinion, uh, Matt Taiteo, who could be just as good as A.J. Klein, not making very much money at all. And you got Craig Robinson, who's damn good as a standing middle linebacker or outside linebacker. Shit, we could start Craig Robinson on the outside, and I think we would be fine. Uh, Klein is not going to be, be able to cover the you know, wheel routes from real quick linebacker like let's say a Devontae Freeman or a uh, Delvin Cook. Ain't gonna happen player. Um, that's why I say that about him. The old football as we know it maybe five years ago I think Klein would be a perfect linebacker honestly. But with so much coming out of the pass coverage and him not being able to keep up with the, the scat back that you're gonna see coming out of the backfield I don't think it's a uh, way far off to say maybe he don't win that outside linebacker job. Okay, fair enough. And if that's the case, if he can't win that job, then yeah, I, I could see the trade talk uh, coming about and being possible. Is but that, if he wins the outside linebacker job, we should keep him. Um, if he can perform, we should go ahead and, and let him handle his business because he is a he is a good a, a pretty decent line. Okay, he's not he's not good, but he's pretty decent. But Ken Crawley is good. I got that. <laughs> you, I'm hating on AJ Klein. You hating on Ken Crawley? I am not just swap players. Ken Crawley. I you actually, might call it what it is and move I, on. I, I let's Ken let's Crawley. let's it's, move on. Let's just it's, move it's, on. He's a solid cornerback. That's what I'm saying. AJ Klein is a solid linebacker. <laughs> Using my words. Okay, well, that's that. Uh, we'll just move on with AJ Klein. Move. Let's go. Wait, to the AJ next. Klein good? AJ by Klein, my definition, he's good. So he's one tier away from being great. I ain't gonna say one tier away. I say by my linebacker. definition of good. I, who knows what your definition of good <laughs> I just is. told you what it was. <laughs> the level under great. No. no All right, well, what you good. getting on me for? He's good. No, by my definition. Your definitions are weird. <laughs> okay, let's go to the <laughs> let's go to the next uh topic. Yeah. Let's talk about the DC, let's talk about the You know in school you got an A, then you got a B, then you got a C, right? So A would so you, a would be great. The, so we're going to the school. A B grades. would be good. Okay. And C so, would be average. So you asking me what in a letter grade what AJ <laughs> Klein is? Yeah. Okay. With AJ Klein to me, I would have to give AJ Klein a B minus. Oh, <gasps> I'm a Paul. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, B minus. Yeah, B minus. C. Well, you know what? C, I say a C, C plus. plus B minus right no, now. No. C yeah, plus. C plus it's B minus. C plus. No doubt about it. What, what's Alex Anzalone to you? Alex Anzalone is is a solid B. Okay, so AJ Klein is not a Hell B minus. No. no, man. No, you you, you disrespect Anzalone. AJ. And if you took if you took AJ Klein's brain and you put it in Anzalone's body, then we would have a Pro Bowl linebacker. You would have you would have the guy from Green Bay. You have uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy with all the hair. It might be better than Clay him. Matthews. That's be who you would have. You have a younger, faster Clay Matthews. Clay Matthews is great at, at rushing the passer, but when, once they put him in a position where he got to do everything. You take A.J. Klein's brain and put it in Alex Anzalone's body, you would have a faster Clay Matthews. He would, he would be there. Yeah, he would be, it would be better than Clay Matthews. Okay, well, let's 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 move on to that. Y'all chime in. Uh, also, always, we always talk about interaction, people. We love interaction. You hear what DC saying? Y'all hear what Big Q saying too? Don't y'all, like, obviously, hey, you know y'all are obviously appalled and shaking y'all heads right now about you, what DC just said. Appalled that you had your disrespect for King Crawley. Please, please comment in the comment section <laughs> if you agree with me, obviously, or if you agree with DC. So you know that that's we always like that. We love to see those comments. But anyway, let's get to our next comment uh, topic, DC, before we hit the break. Uh, uh, talking about the, the NFL's new crown of the helmet rule that they put up. Now, of course, they did this uh, some time ago. You got to play the Dennis Green clip. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. But uh, 
that it, you know to him the crown it, it, it's it's they calling it an infraction which can ultimately eat, lead to an ejection now here's the three primary uh things that will lead to a player being ejected under this helmet rule now of course they say the player lowers his helmet to establish a linear body posture posture prior to initiating and making contact with the helmet a uh, player delivering a low blow had an obstru- unobstructed path to his opponent. Contact was clearly avoid- avoidable. Player delivering a blow had other options. Not every penalty will result in ejection. A flag more often than not will result in a 15-yard penalty. That's huge. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down in many cases. It is uh, in the, at an ejection to the to the hitting of the, using the, the crown of the helmet, which has always been something that they've been uh, adamant about eliminating out of the game. Now, DC, we obviously know uh, about this rule because we've been dealing with this for a while. So the reality of the situation at the end is, I'm asking you, what is your thoughts on this crown of the helmet rule? And this and it's, it's, it's these rule changes that they're doing, not just this rule that they're changing, because actually, you know, you can think about it and you can kind of argue about it. But the rest of these rules, are they are they turning turning the NFL, which is a brutal sport, a savage sport, as a gladiator sport, into some some cream puff type stuff, some soft uh, flowery stuff? You can't soften up football. Football is a violent sport. If you don't like it, turn your damn TV off. Okay, so we're gonna talk about some other stuff on the other side of the break. We'll give you our look at the lookout segment, and we're gonna finish up on this. Uh, soft NFL uh, issue as well. Powder Listen, Puff. The Powder Puff. Powder Puff League. Uh, we're going to, uh, when we come back on the other side of the break, listen no, to Sports Coma. Forget ESPN Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children 101 powerful children affirmations a guide to positive child self-image order your copy today thank you for listening to the pro media network who provides hours and hours of free entertainment to you and yours if you are benefiting positively from our content please donate to help us grow our platform by going to www.patreon.com slash the pro media network That's www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network and support the true independent artists. Check out the Crown They Ass World Podcast, covering all the news and issues that affect you and the ones you care about, only on the PRO Media Network. You're listening to The Sports Coma, your new number one podcast on everything Saints, Pelicans, and a lot more. And now, here's your host, Big Q in the Guy. Welcome back to The Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys. We're talking about the Powder Puff NFL deal. Man, them commercial breaks be coming up on me so fast. Uh, it's, it's really t- the time to something else, my man. But we're talking about the, the, the attempt to guess soft in the NFL and, and, and under the guise of safety uh, and fair play. Uh, we also, later on in this segment, we're going to talk about and, and give our lookout players, and DC probably have one, I'm going to have one, you might have multiple ones, we're going to talk about the players. <laughs> Why one you player. keep trying to give me Cause obviously, multiple people? <laughs> I know the, long, the long-winded one, DC will be able to give you... Man, you just was talking for like 10 minutes last time. I had to set the table, brother. Oh, you got an excuse for every time. You be low with it. 
<laughs> but uh, anyway, like I was saying, man, we talked about the NFL. And I know if you, a lot of you guys out there, I would like to say, man, please interact with us. Tell us what you think about this issue dealing with the NFL. Do you think that uh, the NFL is fine as it is? Uh, you agree with the rules? Uh, uh, how they're changing the rules around? Is it fair? Um, if it's if if one rule change saved one guy from having a, a, a brain injury, or what happened to Shazier up in Pittsburgh? Are you you know or is that fine? Just tell me, tell us what you think. Uh, in the comment section below uh, of, of these topics, not just this topic, but all those topics, you know, feel free to to let it out. You know, if you feel frustrated that a lot of our pro leagues in uh, this country is turning into real weak leagues, uh, you know, air that out here today on the comment section. Uh, DC, let's finish up on this topic, my man. You know, like you were saying earlier uh, before the break came in about the, the, the unfairness of how every time the defense seems to catch up, the fair rules committee or whatever you want to call them, they go into meetings and start gear shifting the rules to benefit the offensive players and uh, forcing the defensive players uh, in many regards to have a severe disadvantage so that they can score points so people can watch the games. Uh, a lot of weird stuff. That too. And also, if, if you don't believe that, then think about this. They also changed the catch rule back to what we know it should be. Right. That's along true. with this. So you can't tell me all of that won't translate into more points per game for very explosive offenses like us. <laughs> right. Well, that's the best. So a, maybe it ain't all bad for a team like us. Could, well, some going to suffer. But, some uh, not a Jacksonville uh, team, I, I really, I, I think that's a very talented team, probably one of the most talented teams in the league. And I hope it doesn't affect uh, that part of the game. Even I'm not rooting for Jacksonville, y'all. Y'all know I bleed black and gold, but I, I have a certain respect for um, talented defenses, man. I don't, I don't want that part of the game to be eliminated. Right. Well, I mean, I will tell you one thing, man. The way I see it is, um, the best team's gonna win at the end of the day, and whether the, whether the players like it or not, they're gonna have to abide by these rules. And uh, we might not be talking about this and the rule that they made with with uh, with the special teams and all this kind of stuff, but then it might not be that bad. Too. It, it might not it be that bad. It depends on how they but, call it, how they officiate. Every time you have a change of rules, and these are not just some petty changes. This, these impacted some of the some really core aspects of the game that you could be winning the game or marching to do something, then your player ends up having one of those what they call flash plays. Tip rules. Right, you, you have one of those flash plays or what they call a bang-bang play, which is it's just the action of what happens carried into it. Now, I don't know if they're going to review it and look at it like, okay, well, the guy intentionally led with the crown of his helmet. No, in the nonsense. NFL, probably so, not. And they just, it's oh, going to call live time, and it's going to be what it is. Right, so we got to understand that, man, but it's going to be interesting to see. But I you guess, would that, that, that go into uh, challenges? Uh, will you be able to challenge that? That's that's all stuff that, you know, we ain't going to really get right into it. Until get the coaches some more challenges, then. Yeah, but they won't. <laughs> They're going to have to be real uh, kind of uh, choosy about that thing. But some people even mention they're taking away just two and giving them unlimited challenges. But and they don't want to slow the game because down. that would dramatically slow the game. It's all the NFL is all all it's three hours, four hours, damn near already. So I I am mad at watching a few more minutes of football. I ain't gonna lie to you. You not, but what about the casual fan that ain't really into the X's and O's? Of well, it? they need to get their ass off there and watch some soap <laughs> operas. That's what they can do. Anyway, let's move on to our next topic, and we're gonna talk they about. They gotta have life. them for the week four when they go pink. There you go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, let's look at the uh, the last topic of the show, which is uh, the segment, our lookout segment. The lookout. That's right, lookout. And in this he particular segment, was a lookout. we're going to talk about the lookouts and who we, lookouts. You, who we think that you should be looking out for. And we ain't going to name some guy that you say, well, oh, well, we already knew we'd look out for and, that and guy. It's the lookouts, mm-hmm. y'all. Al Capone ain't named none of his lookouts, so keep we, that in mind. We're going to name <laughs> we gonna name one guy. I don't know what DC going to do. There ain't going to be no lookout talking but, about Alvin Kamari. <laughs> right. We're going to choose some guys that we think that you really need to look out for. And I'm going to start mine off, DC, by saying it's a guy out there wears Ooh. number 40. Plays for the Saints. I never he's, heard of him. He's a cornerback. His name is Lyndon Stevens. Lyndon Stevens, right, that's right. right. He's from Cincinnati, Bearcat, six foot tall cornerback. 
listen, I'm going to tell y'all guys, this is y'all notice. I always talk about Lyndon Stevens on a slick. I tell you, you watch out for that guy. I'm telling you, well, this could be one of those guys. So that's who gonna replace Ken Crawley. That's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be one, one of them guys that you gotta watch out for, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, just just watch out for him. I'm telling you, when the, when big camp and everything come around, this guy he has the size, he got the speed, he's fundamentally sound. You better watch out for this young man, Lyndon Stevens. Saints been watching out for him for a long time as well. When they before the draft started, they were bringing Lyndon Stevens in and to kickstart some stuff to, to to see how to see how he do. He didn't get drafted by anybody, but the Saints came around and then got and invited him to come into camp. He's on the team right now, and I'm expecting big things from Mr. Lyndon Stevens, who DC disrespected some time ago. Uh, by talking about they talking about trait uh, trying to turn a man into a safety, that's okay. I apologize to Lyndon Stevens' family for what DC said, and now it's up to DC to come and give you his take on who he believes is a player that you need to look out for. Now, DC, who is your lookout player or players? Because I don't know what you're going to do. Who you need to talk <laughs> bro, about? Why you keep trying to put all this pressure on? Me, I'm just man. saying, who your lookout players? He, I don't. People don't. Don't know who who the hell Linda Stevens is. I can't be they throwing know who all he these is names now. out there. And I ain't never talked bad about Linda Stevens. I was talking bad bad about the Saints. How they always trying to change stuff around. But anyway, they take yeah they have to get people and then they want to play a position they ain't never play. I don't never understand that. But anyway, my lookout player is a guy from West Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. Dion Yelder, tight end. Uh. Marriage made in heaven, and, and is he really a lookout though? Because I think he's on some everybody's radar. But go ahead, I'm sorry, I'm just asking. Look, this is my lookout. <laughs> some people, of course, Saints family, they might know about him, just like they might know about Lyndon Stevenson and Natrell Jameson, you know. But Deion Yelder, he ain't getting no national news coverage. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't even drafted. So how you gonna tell me he ain't a lookout player? Come on, man. I'm just saying, but I, I anyway, be pretty smart. There they are. That's why they they wouldn't have missed Linda Stevenson either. Then, <laughs> but anyway, uh, Deion Yelder is the guy that's being groomed to basically take over the tight end position. Uh, maybe as soon as next year, uh, maybe a year after that. Um, you got Ben Watson basically. On a what one year deal yep. and uh, who man, one year. uh, Josh Hill, one who year. I said was on the bubble, all those guys um, on one year, you know, everybody one year. And this guy's uh, he's doing his thing early in the OTA, so that's why Big Q was saying all you guys know about him. I'm sure we talked about him before. Um, we haven't talked about Lyndon Stevenson, so no, um, Stevens. Lyndon Stevens, but apparently, Lyndon Stevens. Uh, apparently, I talked about him and put him down. Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't got nothing praise but praise for my man Deion Yelder. Um he's an excellent uh tight end in my opinion. Uh for what he has right now, of course, he still has to learn a lot of things. But he has a tremendous drive, tremendous heart from everything I studied uh while, like, looking at him in West Kentucky. They put him on special teams unities. He blocked field goals. Uh he, play defense then dude he's just a football player and I like guys like that um some people like to call them dogs you know um but either way I think he's going to be a wonderful addition whether he winds up being our primary tight end or just an addition to uh tight ends that we have I think either way you're going to wind up knowing this guy's name um so be on the lookout for London Wait, why am I saying London? Why am I getting that? <laughs> Dion Yell. Right. I'm about to Dion say your guy, man. That's right. I'm about to say your guy. Man. That's right. But, uh, yeah, I just heard about him. Yeah, that, that what, guy. What position you gonna, gonna play? play? We, we should look out on for that. He's going to back. You gonna play corner? He ain't gonna Call play safety. Back. No, they're not gonna listen to you. I ain't say I ain't say that that they should listen to me on that. I'm saying what the Saints be doing. They're gonna play him as a cornerback. All right, all right. Well, Dion Yell is gonna be a tight end. He ain't gonna, you sure? He might be a fullback. He gonna be a tight end. Okay. Actually, uh, they did hire the little guy. Uh, uh, what was his name? He played. Uh, he played fullback. He actually can play Eurocheck. That's another guy. Uh, could potentially be on the lookout. We'll see. That ain't my guy. All right. Well, there you go. DC you mentioned two guys. <laughs> like but I, I said, said that ain't my guy. I actually made you mention. It. 
because I didn't want to hear your mouth at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there it is. DC picks your check and Dion Yelda, and I pick. <laughs> I pick really, dude? Lyndon Stevens. Really, you still gonna hey, give me the chance? I like to thank y'all for joining us tonight on the Sports yeah. Corner with Big Q and the guys. Thank y'all for coming on in here, joining us. And as yeah, always, if you enjoy the show, please, please, by all account, go to the Patreon.com uh, slash the PRO Media Network and show some support. Also, join the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all them good things. Subscribe. Uh, hit the bell, whatever, for notifications for future work and all that kind of great stuff. And as always, thank you for joining us. Me and DC, Earth. Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guy. Clear, clean, great-tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, An estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans Eye View. 